Had another nervous breakdown. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to what episode is this one? Episode four of my healing diaries. Um, I don't know when these are going to be put up, so I feel like it's pointless in seeing the date. But welcome to episode four of my healing diaries. I don't have a lot to talk about, but we have a lot to talk about. I had another nervous breakdown. I just spit a little. Healing is literally, girl, it's crazy. Healing is a crazy. I'm starting to real. Okay, before I even say that, so if you guys hear Boss Baby, say something she a Boss Baby, it has to play. It's the only way that, you know, she'll simmer down. But, anyways, healing is crazy. Like, it's really this roller coaster of things I have really been like intentional with trying to hear from God honestly it's been I mean I'm not gonna lie to myself and I'm not gonna lie to you guys I mean it hasn't been the best I know that I can do better I know that I have done better in the past but I'm coming to God on different circumstances on different pain different hurt whatever something down the road changed so it kind of it kind of it kind of messes with you okay so i'm, I'm not gonna be lying to y'all something down the road changed so when for well it's for me so when it's time to present myself to a guy it's kind of a little bit hard because my faith has like crumble just a little bit but I'm definitely I'm trying my hardest to like get back into that I can't even say I'm trying my hardest it's just like I think I'm so afraid of what God will uncover for me because I did it um I have done it a few times and the things that he's uncovering is just like I just, I, I don't know, I'm just so afraid. But anyways, <laughs> um, healing is crazy, y'all. I'm really trying to find out, like, what's going on. Like, I really, I don't want to hear from nobody else. I just want the advice from God himself because he really knows. Girl. <laughs> so, update on the, the therapist thing. I was not able to find a therapist. I have not been able to find a therapist. That doesn't mean that I'm going to stop my search. Um, I just haven't been able to find a therapist here. I did go on Black Girl Therapist, but I don't know. Like, I've called and ain't nobody answered. I don't like that. So, and I even left voicemails. But anyways, I haven't been able to find a therapist yet, but I definitely want to put that on my list. Um, it's still on my list, so that's not even checked off. I was able, however, to find a journal. Remember when I, I was just like, when I, I'm holding my camera with my hand, so. Remember when I was like, I want a journal that speaks to me, and it just, you know. I just went to Target. I went in the, the school section, I went to just look for a journal. I was like, you know, maybe I'll be writing off a composition journal like Freedom Writers, you know. But I seen this journal and behold, it was sticking out like a sore throat thumb. If this ain't me on a journal cover, it was the last one too. So this is the journal that I have. And this is so crazy because it's pretty, it's not as big and overwhelming well it's not even overwhelming journaling is journaling but it's not as big as my other journals it's just pretty small it's just a small cute journal and it says never stop growing and y'all know i love me some plants i really want to be a plant mom so that was that was definitely for me um so yeah i have been journaling um honestly like my first day back journaling i didn't want to do it um i was just so angry with god and i had a lot to get up off my chest and i just felt like it was too much to write <laughs> but i wrote 
forced myself to write and it actually felt really really good um to write those things so i don't know i stopped journaling a few years ago a few is two so literally um and i always wondered like was that the thing for me because i would just have so many journals and it just felt like if i keep picking up so many journals like maybe this isn't healthy for me because i feel like each journal holds something and i have to think about like when just speaking to god each journal symbolizes a moment in my life like everything don't have to be in one journal i like to journal and I like buying pretty journals and that was, that's kind of a safe space for me. Like when I don't wanna to talk to people, um, I journal. And there's nothing wrong with buying 50 journals. So if you're one of those people who journal and you're just like, I have too many journals, maybe this isn't my thing. Girl, I love buying journals. I even like buying the pens. I have so many journals. I've always tried to find that perfect journal. I write in all of them. And you know what? As I was talking to God one day, I was just like, God, I don't even know if journaling is for me. But then I remembered that I literally was about to throw away this thing, this way that I speak to God. Like I literally write all my thoughts down, like all my prayers, like there's so many ways that God can hear your prayers. Like I be writing prayers down. I be saying prayers in my head. I be saying prayers out loud. I be saying prayers on my knees. There's so many ways. And I was about to throw away all these memories. Some that probably make me cringe when I go back and read it. But just to see the growth, like, and then I remember I packed them all up. So just to say, if you, Feel like that if you're like maybe it's not for me because I keep buying so many journals take it as each journal is like a moment of your life like girl yeah period <clears throat> when it's time for me to go and that's gonna be a long 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 way <laughs> that's gonna be a long 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 way from now I'm gonna have a Stack of journals about my life, my prayers, stacked up, put on a ribbon. Like, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, back to journaling for me. I do feel like journaling is my safe, safe space. Um, as far as the habits, you guys, I don't even know when I recorded that video. I pretty, I'm pretty sure I said the date. It was probably like August 1st. Um, it's crazy how when I speak in these videos, um, I see them before you guys and I actually I'm speaking days or weeks in advance um, Before things even come into fruitation I totally forgot because I haven't had internet so I'm just using my phone to upload these videos Or I don't know how I'm uploading these videos, but right now. I'm just Talking to my camera and God tell me to be an obedient but when I had was wearing my natural hair and I was like talking about self-care, first of all, I have been doing really good with self-care. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, I'm a bun type of girl. I love my hair out of my face, but I'm gonna get a sew-in. And I definitely found my stylist. I know what type of sew-in I want. I'm getting a sew-in. But um, I was talking about like creating lazy girl habits. I don't think it's lazy, but in the Bible, it says write the vision, make it plain. Like for, I mean, we have the plans for our life, but it's only the Lord who sees it through. I have realized, when I pray to God especially, I have realized that I need a schedule and I don't think that's wrong at all. I, one second, what was I saying? I was saying that doing, like setting up 500 alarms or whatever habits I was saying were lazy girl habits, I don't think they're lazy at all. I think it helps me be productive and I'm actually grateful for that. I'm grateful for clocks. I'm grateful for alarms. Are you kidding me? I set an alarm for everything. So yesterday, um, I was just talking to God and I was just like, 
I really like, I really want a routine. I even said it in that video. I know I said it. I was like, I really want a routine that I can stick to. At least like I really need to come up down pack with like some really good morning routine. Girl, so <laughs> the amount of alarms that I have for the morning is insane. Like I went in the in my clock and I even turned on like the sleep wake so that I know that this is it. I wake up at five in the morning, y'all. Hello. When have I ever? Never. But I wake up at five in the morning, but it also helps me to track my sleeping so that even if I don't go to sleep at 9 a.m., my girls are asleep by, I mean, not 9 a.m., 9 p.m., so my girls are asleep by 9 p.m. So I did that. I set it up. I made it to where, like, alarms are very annoying, but I made it to where that the sound is something soothing for me or just something so simple that I wouldn't get annoyed by it because, honestly, let's be, let's be completely honest. Like, the regular alarm sound that comes with the phone, I get so tired of hearing it, babes. Turn it off. I'm annoyed. I don't even want to wake up, but I don't want to feel like that. So there are um, some apps. Um... I forgot what app I was using, but it was so soothing to just, it just sounded like rain falling, like you're in a rainforest waking up on this, the trees are like this evergreen color, it's just raining, everything is just, you could just hear nature falling, and it was so soothing to wake up to, but right now, I'm just using whatever, um, I had to leave the app. Y'all, <laughs> I got this, okay? But I had to delete it at the app. I don't know why I did that. I need to go find it. I'm gonna write that down for the next video to let you guys know what it was. But I've been just been using a, the regular sound, which is signal. It's not that loud. It's just like a beep type thing, like some type of sound, it's like a chime or something. But I have so many, anyways, what I was getting to, I don't know if you guys can see, yeah. Girl, I have so many alarms set and I even labeled these alarms. I have an entire night routine and morning routine. Like at this time I need to break breakfast, at this time I need to be leaving the house. I even put church on here, girl, for every Sunday. At this time, I need to start cooking dinner. At this time, I need to start getting the girls ready for bed. And so on, and so on, and so on. The only thing that I haven't really had time to think about is setting an alarm for what am I doing? Like, when I set these alarms, I'm like, okay, so I'm just a mom. Because I got the morning routine and the night routine for the girls. But in between the day, where is... Where is me? Where is me and the Lord? So, I really need to sit and talk to God and just be like, what am I supposed to be doing during the day? Because I just set alarms and a lot of them for just being a mom. But yeah, I have been setting alarms. There's nothing wrong with setting 100 alarms. Don't be listening to people saying that you are, don't listen to people saying that like you're compulsive, whatever they wanna say, it's not true. Um, who in the Bible, I was actually reading up on it and I forgot, but there's so many people in the Bible who plan their days. Are you kidding? Of course you plan your day, but it's the Lord who sees it through, but they still plan their day. So I feel like it makes me more productive and I don't know, it just, it makes me feel better that those things are now checked off my list per se. So that's a really healthy habit. I was going to say it was lazy, but it's actually a really healthy habit to have if you struggle with time management and just trying to find the groove of things i feel like it's a really really good start i'm gonna have to do this for a couple weeks until i can get used to waking up at 5 a.m because babe i'm sleepy okay i even I actually woke up today at 5 40 because i was that tired like i make the lunches at the end of the night i even got an alarm for that preset the lunches before the end of the night so that I'm not scrambling like a mad woman like these alarms really help me stay grounded and kind of stay calm until like I could find my own routine and start doing it by myself you know um but right now I need some assistance and that's okay
So I wanted to talk about, um, I try like to, I try like to, um, write down the things that I want to talk about um, in all of these episodes. Like when God tells me to talk about something, I am starting to write them down. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but, <laughs> so it's just gonna be us two, but um, I kinda pre-write like a lot of like my ideas because God wants me to talk about these. So when he wants me to talk about something, I'm getting in a habit of like writing um, notes. And I want to talk about something just really quickly. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on it um, because I felt like I did in my notes and I feel like it's really not, I mean, it'll make a huge impact, but it's really not my, it's deep, but it ain't that deep. And actually it is that deep, but I really just want to make it short. But um, I, I, heard, I heard myself telling God, like, I don't want to forfeit my crown. And I will always re, um, get you guys to um, watch Faith Like a Farmer by Transformation Church. It is something that I will forever reference, especially when it comes to purpose. Um, especially when it comes to purpose because it is just literally so pivotal the way that Pastor Michael Todd explained it. <coughs> and if you don't like him, I don't really don't want to hear that. Like, So it's just so pivotal how Pastor... Um, Michael Todd explained it. He was just like, basically like, you know, like God gave everybody these seeds and I don't know who got the however many seeds, but there's just, everybody got seeds. Pretend that 10 people got seeds. This is basically how he explained it. 10 people got seeds. Um, the first person got the most seeds, second person got this many seeds and so on and so on. Out of, t you gotta be kidding me. That's not funny. Yeah, you better. But out of the 10 people who got seeds, only nine planted the seeds. Everybody, when God went back around and was like, okay, what did you do with your seeds? Everybody was like, I planted it. Oh my goodness, look at the garden that I grew. Like, look at the harvest that I have. He went back to this one person and he held his in the same sack. He didn't put in the dirt for it to grow. And God was like, okay, what'd you do with your seeds? And he was just like, and he was just like, um... I saved them. I saved my seeds. And this is why I, I get in a habit of not only, my nose is itching, sorry. Not only telling, that is not, no. No, no, no. Girl, what is it? This is why I get in the habit of not only telling you guys to, that holding on to your gifts is literally greedy. <laughs> like, when God places something in you, bring that thing out. Because holding on to it is greedy, and not only is it greedy, so what he did was, he was like, okay, you, you, don't, you don't wanna, you saving them, oh, okay. He ended up giving these seeds away to someone who was already, who planted, I think it was the poorest man who planted his harvest, who planted his seeds and had a harvest. And yeah, I hate to say that that's how it is, but that's how it is. And when I say I'm not forfeiting my crown, this is very tough to say, but I'm gonna get it out. Sometimes, because this is, look, stopping and trying to figure out how to do this without sage on my hip or trying to hush my baby. I'll probably put off doing this video for days. So sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. But I was telling God, I was like, I don't want to forfeit my crown. And sometimes we go through things. Like I have been through so much stuff. Sometimes we go through things and 
God knows that it hurts. And it kind of pushes me back a little about like my gifts. And sometimes it, when you do not have the right crowd in your ear and you want to talk about your dreams or you know you want to share personal things or goals with people who just don't align they can set you back and god knows this stuff but i was just like i really got into the moment and i was just like i'm not forfeiting my crown like i have i've always asked god like why am i here like why do i have this social media presence like do y'all know i'm i'm not trying to keep my own horn but let me tell y'all how like i'm not trying to say this to just be like just saying it but i know for a fact like i can feel it at the tip of my heart like i can feel it yeah ain't no no here see y'all the devil is trying to distract me from saying this but it's finna get sick i do not have a tablet baby and this thing doesn't even work but you know what i'm talking about we go through things in life and we go through seasons um and we go through we just go through these storms and depending on basically like how self-preservering you are how strong you are i'm not saying that anybody is weak but sometimes we have sometimes like even me as a person i kind of like shrivel up and kind of just like turn into like this turtle i always call myself a turtle sometimes we go through these phases in our life and sometimes we just i i i be calling myself a turtle because when i get hurt i really just ball up and go in a shell and just like nobody nobody bother me i was telling god how i didn't want to forfeit my crown i didn't want my seeds to be taken away from me i don't i want to be able to showcase my gifts now the good thing about me is i have been doing this but i haven't been consistent with it and i really want to prove myself to god um and just to myself because i truly feel like i deserve it just to <sighs> It happened. Like, I had this conversation with Kyle last night. It's crazy that I'm saying this. It happened. And I cannot change the past. You cannot change the past. Like, we know those people who hurt us. We know those situations who hurt us. We know the people, the situations, the things that shaped us to be this guarded person. Or, for in my instance, I'm a guarded person. I'm a guarded person. Get about my business. But I'm spreading my business telling y'all um, like you know but we know and sometimes these situations these people these places these things that happen in our lives it kind of has us do like a little push back um and you know it's it kind of I wouldn't say that we're forfeiting our gifts because it may be something that you started. Now, if you just hold on to them seeds that God gave you, now you're really being stingy. Don't do that. He will give it to somebody else. But it may, like this purpose that he gave us basically is what I'm saying. Like the harvest that he wants us to have, he knows that we've been through things. But at what point do we get up? So I was just looking like at like, not even my analytics because i actually ended up deleting youtube studio off of my phone um and i because god actually told me to i actually started looking at like my analytics and i was just like jesus like why did you put me in this space like why 
there are people literally when i tell you i'm so anointed to do this and i am so afraid because i have had people in my past judge me for the amount of subscribers that i have i have had people in my past judge me for like maybe like oh you you don't have a lot of views or you don't have a lot of comments or you don't have a lot of subscribers there are people literally with less subscribers than me going hard in the paint to even get to my number and I'm not grateful. And it's not even that I'm not grateful. I don't feel like I have a place here. So I started questioning God and I was like, why am I here like so easily? I was like, I wanted to grow and you just, I didn't even try. And I really don't like that, but it's really God's way of saying, this is where I placed you. Because I think he knows that I am a perfectionist and I just be like, I don't. What he has called me to do is really, really hard. And I'm so afraid to be judged. It's like, I don't want to be in this place. I don't think, I've said this time and time before, I don't think I'm called to be here. This, it, get somebody else to do it because it can't be me. But every time I turn around, he shows me that this is where I'm supposed to be. Even on TikTok. Would y'all believe me if I told you guys I had 20,000 followers on TikTok and I don't do. I be playing. I be playing. I literally post just. I just be posting anything. Like I find something that I like and I post it and it just does what it does. It just do what it do. And so many times like God be telling me that like I am qualified it don't matter what nobody else say I need to focus on God and what he said and not what other people say and sometimes especially when people are so close to you and like you just it could be family it could be friends it could be anybody and they you just tell them your dream this is like a kid this is why I have this thing with my kid, like, even though it sounds so crazy, she'd be like, what did she say? She like, it, when a kid be like, I want to be a power ranger and people just be laughing like, child, you can't be no power ranger. I let people, I let my kid be a kid, you know? And when, because my daughter loves me. So if she'd be like, mama. I want to be a Power Ranger. You you go, girl. You be that Power Ranger. Period. You be the Power Ranger. You want to be a Power Ranger? You could be a Power Ranger. We call battle suit right now. You ready? Like, you'll probably be a Power Ranger for Halloween or something. But what I'm getting at is don't let people crush your dreams. My daughter, she knows. Like, this, this is our bond. She knows I'm my... I'm, I'm her mom, so when it's time for her to come share her dreams with me, I don't wanna be like, so you don't wanna be a lawyer? Not even the president, like big dreams. I don't wanna be a doctor? I wanna be a Power Ranger. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So I don't wanna do that to my daughter. And as we grow older, as I have grown older, I'm starting to realize that, <sighs> ciao people just be no good and their intentions do not be pure people celebrate who they want to celebrate and I had to realize that my separation was God's preparation for me to be talking about this right now a lot of people it's not even uh, people in my life have talked about me and I kind of brushed it off because I'm such a, I'm just a lover girl, honestly. Like, I can't hear you talking about me and I'll just brush it off like, whatever, it meant no harm. But you showing your true colors. When somebody be like, oh, you can't do that. She don't even have enough subscribers. Like, like who does she think she is? Please do not listen to them. And it will hurt. I don't truly think that those are people meant to be in your life. And I, I, I hate to say hate because hate is a strong word. I don't mean to say that, but it's true. You, you will hear pastors say it all the time. 
you need to be surrounded by people who celebrate you. I was surrounded by so many people who I wanted to share this thing with. And it was like when people was like, oh, what do you like to do as a hobby? Oh, I actually like to talk to my camera. I've been talking to my camera since I, girl, I picked up my camera like when I was deep, deep, deep dark in the pits like years ago probably over 10 years ago you guys don't see those videos now though like i've been doing this for a very long time but i haven't been consistent with it because i can hear people in my ear like when i it started years ago when i wanted to do this and i would tell people and i swear y'all my mom is man god i be wanting to cry i'm not gonna cry when God made people do not get parents they don't get a mom like mine a lot of people don't when I say God did that when he gave my mom to us I mean that from the bottom of my heart because people family friends people that I was close with like they would really try to tell me that this is not where I'm meant to be. I'm not doing enough. I don't have enough. Like they would compare me to their favorite YouTubers. Like, like they didn't start having one. Okay. And I would stop because I would feel like that I'm embarrassing myself. I would feel like that I'm just doing too much. Like I would feel like that I'm not enough or I don't have a place here. I'm stopping that. I don't want to forfeit my crown because of what somebody else said. You don't have to watch. You can click the X. And it may be, it just may, I'm thinking, see, at this point, I'm even thinking about how other people feel. I don't care. I don't care. You don't have to watch. And I always used to be so pressed because there were people who I actually cut out of my life who ended up coming back and they used to be like oh i watched your videos like child why what imagine someone telling you that you can't do something but they keeping up making sure that you can't do it and i'm literally letting them i'm because i know for a fact that the people who said those things, they like, yeah. It's sometimes it's just the evil spirit in people. Like, they like, yeah, I, I, can, I can just diminish her. Like, it's the devil. It is the devil saying through another person, mm -mm, that ain't enough. Mm -mm. Well, when I looked at my homie or... When I looked at my favorite YouTuber, like, they get this many, I'm like, mm-mm, that ain't enough. And I felt inadequate. I'm over it. Over it. I have power in my voice. I am strong. I am powerful. I'm beautiful. I'm joy. I'm light. I'm love. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I am a child, in God, a child of God. I was chosen to do this. I am chosen. I was in third grade when I said I was chosen. I didn't know what that meant. But if I knew it was the hell and turmoil that I've been through, <laughs> God, I was picked. I was chosen. So no, I'm not going to let anybody diminish my dreams anymore. And if I only have to talk to my mama, so be it. When I, y'all, she's like my biggest cheerleader and i'm so grateful for my mom y'all have no idea it literally gives me chills that i really even my sisters i really get somebody in my corner that's like literally like and i finally told her the people's names who were saying these things and she was like be so for real no no you keep doing what you're doing so i'm not forfeiting my crown i don't know where this video these videos will take me but i do like hear god i can just hear my father like just telling me that i'm the woman for the job and i every time i scroll on instagram or on tiktok i hear pastor sarah jake roberts of course gosh i hope y'all be knowing that i hear pastor sarah jake roberts say 
I'm the woman for the job and I am the woman for the job, especially when you feel you are not adequate enough, when you feel like you're disqualified, when you feel like you ain't got enough training, you ain't got enough schooling and God told you to do this, you better do it because I promise you he will open up doors so that you can do it because he called you to do it. So he gonna make a way. That just gave me chills, <laughs> period. But I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting better with these. I feel like as a person, I'm growing. Like, of course you guys aren't gonna see like the breakdowns and you know, all that other stuff. But when I do be having my breakdowns and I have them often, there's nothing wrong with crying because crying tears, God stores them up and he, plants them in your garden and it grows hello the harvest be it's going to be fruitful so I'm not forfeiting my crown and I am just going to so many people calling me I'm just going to be obedient in what God has for me and when I tell y'all he told me that what took people seven years ten years it is literally I can hear him say like 30 days crazy don't know how but it's gonna happen so fast for me it's literally because i be telling god like what's it matter you ate your food i be i be telling i be telling let me get her i don't know lord like i've seen like you know like I be making excuses like people like me don't grow overnight and he like but you is like people like me just it just don't happen and he's like it will but I I know what I gotta do so what has God told you that you needed to do like what has girl smash that thing up she don't know how to use it but what has God been telling you that you can do? What have you been telling God in confidence? Like when you get those boosts and it just feels like a rush of happiness. It just feel it just feels so good and it's just so it's so powerful and it's so motivational. And you're like I can do that. That is God. So what has He been telling you that? your sad self I, I hate to say sad self but what has he been telling you that like when you are not having that high you tell yourself otherwise what has god been telling you what are you not forfeiting what gift has god placed on the inside of you and you feel inadequate to do you feel disqualified you feel like you ain't got it all but i'm telling you he's gonna open up the doors just as he is opening up the doors for me he was just waiting on me he was just waiting on me he was just waiting on me to pick up my camera to do it like this do it with the baby on my hip crying he was just waiting on me the doors are already there he was just waiting on me so that i can walk up to them they're they're already there knock knock you could have it there it so what has god been telling you I am enough as I am I am